Excuse me. Strangers on a train and rope have been compared many times before. Usually, the focus is either on undertones of homosexuality for the male leads, or else on the mimesis of violence between the two films. However, Hitchcock was one for motifs, and this extends to his women characters. In these films, we don't see the Hitchcock blonde types that dominate his 1950s filmography, but the women characters still feel familiar, and similar to the complicated masculinity of Hitchcock's male characters, you always did stutter when you were excited. The women in Strangers on a Train and Rope play with normative femininity in cheeky, coded ways. In these two films, we find three of Hitchcock's archetypal women characters, the marriageable brunette, the girl who wears glasses, and the society dame. The marriageable brunette is represented by Guy's fiancée Anne in Strangers on a Train and by David's fiancée Janet in Rope. They indicated marriage very soon. This type appears more consistently in Hitchcock's 1930s and 1940s films, and she is characterized by her good breeding and upper-class manners. However, she's no stiff society lady. How many years has it been since I said, Oh, it tickles. Don't you tell me. Janet exhibits a sharp, irreverent wit. Well, now, there must be a reason. Freud says there's a reason for everything. And Anne displays a sense of daring in her support of Guy. Well, then I'll go. We might think of Anne and Janet as precursors to Grace Kelly's character in Rear Window. Janet has style and taste, writing for a popular women's magazine. How's the new job? What are you doing? Well, writing that same dreary column on how to keep the body beautiful. For whom this time? Oh, an untidy little magazine known as Allure. But feels comfortable in conversation with her male friends. Anne is perfectly willing to break the law to help her fiancé clear his name. Just make sure Barbara has everything ready as soon as the third set starts. The Girl Who Wears Glasses is a familiar type for Hitchcock aficionados. She is usually, though not always, a secondary character. A kid's sister, an ex-wife, even a domestic employee. She often has transgressive interests, such as an overt interest in men or an interest in the macabre. Guy, did you know Mr. Hennessy helped crack that axe murder I was reading about? You know, the one where the body was cut up and hidden in the butcher shop. This type is most clearly represented by doubled characters in Strangers on a Train. Barbara, Anne's younger sister, and Miriam, Guy's soon-to-be ex-wife. At first glance, little seems to link these women besides their eyeglasses. They are physically mirrored, but the substance of their personalities seems to have no moral resemblance. She was a trap. However, both Barbara and Miriam play with taboo. Miriam possesses uncontainable sexuality, exhibiting no shame for having multiple sexual partners. No man runs out on me, Guy, not even you. Barbara has a fascination with the gruesome. I still think it'd be wonderful to have a man love you so much he'd kill for you. And openly flirts with the detectives. Oh, oh I'm so oh, sorry. It's quite oh, all right, me, please. let me get it. Mrs. Wilson in Rope has a much looser association to this type, but her flirtations with Rupert and sometimes inappropriate comments. If I were you, I'd go easy on the panty, dear. Come on, Janet, don't be polite. Suggests that in her younger days, she may have borne a closer resemblance to someone like Barbara. So you that kind of party, I'll up a little. <laughs> The Society Dame is represented by multiple characters and strangers on a train, most notably Bruno's mother and the lady at the party that Bruno charms and then strangles. In Rope, she's represented by Mrs. Atwater, David's aunt. Oh, delighted to have you, Mrs. Atwater. Delighted to come, dear boy. These high society ladies are coded as vapid or perhaps frivolous. You're a naughty boy, Bruno. <laughs> When you can always make me laugh. They often wear shiny clothes, and their voices are loud with a distinctive, exaggerated enunciation. Me? Oh. Despite coming from privilege, like many Hitchcock characters, they display an interest in taboo subject matter. So attractively sinister. Mrs. Atwater delights in speculating with Rupert, who might be worth killing. 
Landlords, of course, are another matter. You're seeking an apartment? Call on our Miss Sashwaite of the Blunt <laughs> Instrument Department. <laughs> what a divine idea. And the woman at the party initially finds the demonstration of strangulation to be great fun. You don't mind if I borrow your neck for a moment, do you? Well, it's not for long. In general, Hitchcock characters display ambiguity in their gender roles and fluid sexuality. As Alexander Doty and other Hitchcock scholars have repeatedly noted, censorship codes in the UK and US caused Hitchcock to use subtext and codes to undermine normative sexuality. Slight improvement over Marion. Most characters exhibit some interest in taboo, which makes them fun to watch and rewatch. There's always some new detail, a look, a vocal inflection to notice and appreciate. I'm Laura Ivins. Thank you for watching.